talk about tattoos from my own personal experience. I have never watched another video about this topic, so hopefully it gives you some new insight. I'm gonna let you guys into my songwriting process, so here it is. You pick three chords, sometimes four, that you think will go together. And then you start singing in your head like, This one says, you're on your own and you know what you know and you are the one who'll decide where to go. And that is from Dr. Seuss. I am an English nerd. And um, this is Frida Kahlo. Now, a really cool artist named Very Baby. I am tagging her Instagram. I drew this or painted this and I love her oil paintings. And then um, I did find like a, a bird that was a Pacific Parallette. That was like a necklace it wasn't really made to look realistic i guess that i thought fit into this and this was actually my bird not this one my bird sure she was a pacific parrotlet as well just like ben and uh she passed away prematurely when i was a teenager you know it's really sad um and the quote at the bottom says lo que no me mata me alimenta he roughly translated from spanish but it's a frida Kahlo quote got viva la mujer because I was feeling super feminist and I was like, who needs a man? I don't need no man. I've been happily taken for about three years. Right here around my wrist, um, this says mindset. And the reason why I actually got this was because I don't want to get too much into it, but I wasn't able to finish this sleeve the way that I wanted to. And I wasn't super happy with the way that it looked just like this. So I got this. Of course I have my Lion King tattoo, which I will zoom in on. Simba, you are more than you have become. Remember who you are. That hit me in the feels. For my Disney peeps. That was actually uh, the first tattoo I got officially at a shop. I set the appointment when I was 17. I was in high school, I remember. I called the artist, I love your work. How can I get an appointment? And I had to wait eight months for my appointment, but it was so worth it. It was also very expensive, but that's also worth it. It's like my favorite tattoo ever. I have a lot, like a few little ones everywhere. I mean, I have one behind my neck. It says, love and be loved. It's actually inspired by the movie Moulin Rouge. The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. I'm not ashamed to admit I was inspired by Angelina Jolie. At the time she had like something right there and that's what, what made me feel the like old English look. I know, whatever. Um, got the cross <laughs> because believe it or not, I do consider myself in my heart of hearts a Christian. Don't judge me. Okay, whatever. I got Southern California because I had just traveled and I don't know, I didn't realize how Californian I am because I've lived here my whole life. Los Angeles area to be specific until I go somewhere else and then I realize like, whoa, I'm a Californian dude. This one was actually done by two artists and this one is uh, it's a tiger, it's my favorite animal. Um, I know, I was actually able to work with quite a few of these animals that I have tattooed on me when I was volunteering at a wildlife rehabilitation center where they took um, animals that were abused in circus-like situations and or kept as pets and then unable to be cared for, all this stuff. So I was able to work with those animals and basically what I did was husbandry. So for free I volunteered to pick up their poop because to me those animals are rock stars. And I was starstruck and I was like, I'll clean up your poop just so I can be next to you. That's how I feel about animals. I love animals, I don't know, can you tell? Um, 
But yeah, I was happy to do it. I just didn't have the time to continue on doing it because it was a heavy commitment, like a 10 hour shift once a week that you had to do or they just cut you. And I was unable to do that after a while. So that is why I stopped, but I did like it. And I do have a few other little tattoos that I'm not really gonna show because I got them when I was a teenager. That's pretty much the gist of my tattoos. Uh, I do still wanna get a Harry Potter tattoo of some sort and a Dis another Disney tattoo or two or three or four or whatever. Um, can never have enough Disney tattoos, but it's actually been a few years since I've gotten a tattoo because when I go tattoo, I go big or I go home. Like all my pieces have been pretty big, pretty expensive. Um, and I am pretty picky with the tattoo artists that I go to. So I tend to only wanna go to the more expensive tattoo artists. Um, this clip is getting really long. So let's get into the 10 things that you need to know before getting a tattoo, whether it be your first or your last. Let's talk about it. Let's get into these, shall we? I actually had to write them down because I'm sure it's no surprise to you that I have a, quite the short attention span. So in order to stay on topic with these, I've written down some notes about it. So I feel like I'm on a talk show. Good evening, Jan. This is Janice. Why is my voice deeper? <laughs> All right, it's awkward. Okay, so the 10 things that you must know before getting your first tattoo. You ready for it? So one would be take the time to find the perfect artist for the tattoo that you've chosen to get. So you can sit on my headband, that's fine. You really wanna look at their work and make, Ben, you're gonna have to shut up though, that's the thing. Okay? Can you shut up? Cool, thanks. You really wanna look at their work and make sure that, look at their work and make sure that it's relative to what you've decided to get and what you want. Because um, this leads me into my second tip, which is, about tattoo styles and what that is is there are many different styles of tattoos and I apologize I had to put Ben back because he was being a little chatterbox. Tip number two, uh, make sure you know the style of tattoo that you're getting so that you can find the perfect artist in that niche style. Now to give you an example of a few tattoo styles um, out there, this by no means is all of them, but you have your traditional tattoo, which is like the sailors and all that stuff from the 1950s kind of thing. Um, you have your portrait style tattoo, which is the picture of your grandma or your mom or your dog or whatever. And the one that looks realistic, like a picture. Those can come in black and gray and in color. And those are two different niches in itself but we won't talk about that right now. Black work, you have your color, you have your watercolor, tribal tattoo artist and your Japanese style tattoo artist, your dot work style tattoo artist, your calligrapher, the one that can write out the nice handwriting for you that's even and perfect and visually appealing and, and usually a tattoo artist who's not a calligraphist or calligrapher, I don't know. Um, they'll usually print out a font that's pre-generated from the computer, but basically you know what your vision is and it's so important that you find the appropriate artist to make your vision a reality. That being said, not any tattoo artist can deliver that for you. That does not mean that they're not good, they're just specializing in something specific. And if they don't, then maybe that's why they're not good. Just gonna say. Tip number three is to make sure that you know where you want the tattoo before you go in for your consultation. So this is something I've always done. This sounds really nerdy, but um, I would always like draw the tattoo on myself with marker and no, in no way did it look good, but I kind of got the idea of like the size, the color, where I wanted it, the placement, before I went into my consultation, which is basically where you meet up with the tattoo artist, tell them what you want, set the appointment. That way when you come in for your appointment, you don't waste any time doing that because that's very time consuming and that they just get straight to the tattoo, which is also very time consuming or at least if it's a big piece. So um, make sure you know where you want that um, because just 
creating the design and the stencil and all that takes time in itself so it definitely speeds up the process for tip number four is if the placement of your tattoo or design or anything feels off during the stencil process or during the consultation speak up like don't keep your mouth shut about that because you're the one who's gonna have to live with the tattoo and not the artist and if it's a nice artist and a good person they definitely won't care if they have to erase the stencil and put it back on you um, or redraw the design or whatever they have to do. I must say that I'm pretty much a nightmare when it comes to getting a tattoo. I think that I am because I'm so picky about the placement, the size, where I want it. Sometimes it doesn't look the way that I had thought it would and it's not the tattoo artist's fault. It's just like, oh, I just realized I don't like that right there. My camera overheated. Good one. Love when that happens. It's the best. It's the best. I love it. Um, so, yeah, speak up about that. I don't know where I left off, to be honest. But tip number five is don't go cheap when it comes to getting a tattoo. Don't try to bargain with the tattoo artist or get them to lower their prices. Don't haggle them. If they are a good artist, they're not going to budge on that and it's just going to aggravate them and feel make them feel undervalued and you don't want that when you're getting a tattoo from somebody because your experience can be very good and they can be very generous with their time with you and their efforts and all that or they can be unhappy, indifferent, and kind of grumpy with you and you don't want that to happen. So when I was younger, I'm ashamed to say that I would try to get a lower price. I feel bad about that now, but as I got older, I stopped doing that. Um, but yeah, I know a lot of people do that. Don't, please don't do that. Uh, with anyone who's providing a service or running a business, they set their prices for a reason and they're usually not balling out. Like, just because the tattoo's expensive doesn't mean that they don't have to pay the shop a lot of money or pay for all their equipment and get extreme hand cramps and arthritis and have like a doctor for that that they have to pay um, and all that stuff. So have a little sympathy for them. Um, they're working hard for their money and just, you know, pay it, and if it's a good artist, it's worth it because you have the tattoo for life. So make it a good experience. Um, and if you can't afford to get a tattoo of high quality, I really advise you just save up and wait a little bit. Um, be resourceful and get the tattoo when you can afford it as opposed to getting a cheaper alternative because trust me, from personal experience, I've gotten tattoos removed. I have friends who've gotten tattoos removed and it's expensive. It's more expensive than getting the tattoo and more painful and more time consuming. So, um, well, you know, it depends on the area about the pain, but um, for the most part, yeah, the healing process is a nightmare. Make sure that it's something that you really want to look at forever, no matter how good the artist is. Um, there have been a few times where I backed out of some ideas that I was going back and forth with some great artists about and I just decided that one, it wasn't financially a priority and two, I could probably live without it so that wasn't a good sign. So um, that's something that I advise you doing because I have gotten tattoos impulsively and then kind of had a post tattoo depression after where I had to accept the fact that it would be on me forever and I wasn't so sure that I liked it. So. Um, I did fix those tattoos, like like this one for example, it used to look different, but a nice other tattoo artist just kind of fixed it for me and added flowers and made it more feminine, but I uh, don't want to get into that story right now, I'm just going to say that I wasn't too happy with my decision, it was one of those impulsive ones. Tip number seven is be patient in waiting for the tattoo artist that you want and you have your heart set on because a lot of really great artists are booked out months in advance and if you anticipate the waiting time and even use that time to save, um, it's worth it because a few months in passing for a tattoo that's going to be on you for the rest of your life is totally worth it. Okay, my computer keeps over, I mean my camera keeps overheating and my battery is about to die so let's get into number eight tip number eight is more of an insight now from what I've heard from other tattoo artists and from personal experience color tattoos hurt more and take longer to heal because they have to grind the ink in deeper into your skin to make sure that the color pigment takes now some skin rejects certain colors and some skin is allergic to certain colors and sometimes it's not now 
I have tinted windows, that's what they call skin with, with color. And um, white doesn't really take very well uh, with my own tattoos personally, but eh, other colors do all right. So tip number nine, this one's a little silly, but um, don't get drunk or high before getting a tattoo. It's not gonna make it hurt less. It's, it's not advisable since when you drink, your blood thins out, you bleed more while getting the tattoo. Um, any tattoo artist will tell you at a professional shop not to get drunk or high before you tattoo. So I would say um, just relax, eat beforehand, bring some headphones with um, audiobook, music that helps you feel entertained, or a movie or a TV show that you like on Netflix, binge something, whatever. It's gonna take a while, and the more you think about the pain, the tougher it's gonna be to get through it. I will say that a tattoo definitely hurts more towards the end because your skin is aggravated and usually inflamed, and so it even hurts to the touch. Imagine the needles going, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, being distracted should help. And tip number 10, don't take your aftercare lightly. Make sure that you keep your tattoo out of the sun for I would say three months. Some people only wait like eight weeks, but three months because your, your tattoo is more susceptible to become faded, whatever, your skin is very vulnerable, it's open. Um, and so you wanna be wearing sunblock when you do decide to expose your tattoo to the sun and the world. Just take care of it, it's a wound that needs to heal and if you don't take care of that during the healing process, it won't look as nice. So uh, that's something that's super important. You don't want your tattoos to get infected by you going to the gym or whatever the case. Now, to get a little specific, um, you actually can't or don't wanna work out the area that's swollen when you get a tattoo because uh, flexing your arm will cause the skin to kind of stretch out and crack and break so and you don't want to get sweat in it so I would say even after getting a tattoo I usually take about a week or two off the gym depending on how long the healing process is which is hard to do but it's worth it um, to make sure that you're taking good care of yourself so I hope these tips helped my camera died once more as I was filming that, so I apologize for this awkward transition. But that was the end of my video, and I hope that you find these tips helpful. And if there is anything that I forgot to cover or that you would like me to expand upon, please comment below. And I know this wasn't a Disney video technically, but I do have a Disney tattoo. Do I love you because you're wonderful? Or are you... Wonderful because I love you. Are you the sweet invention of love?